Top five cards! What up, baby rhinos, and welcome back to The Rarest, a series where we show off some of the coolest and most elusive collectibles known to pop culture. And today, after months of teasing, we're finally taking a look at the top five rarest Pokemon cards. Why top five? Well, it's because realistically, Pokemon cards just don't fetch a ton of money these days, minus a select few. And although I could go on about Shining and Gold Star cards all day, there's no one that really stands out. In fact, it really is just a few purposely limited cards and defects that fetch buckets of money. So with that out of the way, let's get into it. These are the rarest Pokemon- Wait, Stan. Oh, if it isn't our talented music producer, Arcane Toaster. What's up? You're not going to discuss the card game itself, are you? No, definitely not. This is a series for collectors and enthusiasts, not professionals. Besides, I don't think I've ever even learned how to play. Same here. In fact, most kids would just make up rules whenever it suited them. I'm glad we're on the same page then. Definitely, Pewds. Th that's not my name. This is the rarest Pokemon cards. Okay, so I'm cheating a bit on this one right from the get-go. You see, for a Charizard to be considered rare, and by extension expensive, it must be graded 9 or higher, and be a first edition print. If it manages to do any of these things, then congratulations, you just made $300. And if by some miracle it's graded a perfect 10, then you're looking at around $700. But if your Charizard isn't any of these things, then sorry guys, it's just not worth that much. As the precursor to the Pokemon World Championships, the Tropical Mega Battle was an early global tournament held annually. And like the best Pokemon tournaments of today, the winning prizes were custom designed one-offs. This particular competition featured only 12 Tropical Mega Battle 2001 cards given to winners and of course nowadays these trophies have become quite valuable. A mint condition version of this Japanese card far fetches around $10,000 USD, but even a less than perfect version can sell for $5,000 due to how limited the run was. Either way, it may not be as epic as that famous Charizard, but it is worth significantly more. Finally, we have our first misprint. Well, I guess planned misprint would be a better term. The pre-release Raichu card makes number 3 on this list, and for a great reason. Not only is it a part of the oldest set of Pokemon cards, but there's also only between 10 to 15 known worldwide which obviously just adds to their rarity. These Raichu cards sell for only a bit more than the Tropical Mega Battle ones, going for just over $10,000 USD in most cases. And finally, it's worth noting that a pre-release Raichu card is considered the rarest North American or English card in the world. Personally, I'm just glad Raichu finally has something over his pre-evolution. Take that, Pikachu. I have no pricing information on this next set of cards, or any information in general, beyond the level of rarity they possess. The numbers 1, 2, and 3 trainers cards were awarded to the top 3 finishers in early Pokemon TGC tournaments. No one's really sure how many of these even exist, but we do know that they guaranteed the winners re-entry into the World Championships for the following year. Other than that, these ones are definitely the greatest mystery of the Pokemon card game and I'd love to see what one could potentially be worth. Here it is, the rarest Pokemon card in the world. And no, it isn't a Charizard, but it is a Pikachu. Wow, spoke too soon on number three. Sorry, Raichu. Now, although only a Pikachu, this card is especially rare, as it was created as part of a Pokemon card game illustration contest back in late 1997 as the prize card for only five winners. In total, only six were made, but one is kept in storage by the Pokemon TGC blog, which leaves only five ultra rare cards left in the wild. Being the only official card with a paintbrush in the bottom right corner and a double star rarity rating, it's no wonder why this card has sold between twenty and fifty thousand dollars during its only recorded sales. And yes, that's not only good for the number one spot on this list, 
but also makes the Pikachu Illustrator card one of the rarest Pokemon pieces of memorabilia in history. Period. Well, there you have it, Randys. The top five Pokemon cards of all time. Personally, I'd want that pre-release Raichu in my collection, as I love the orange mips. But you'll have to let me know which card you thought was the coolest on this list, and of course, let me know what your personal rarest Pokemon card was in the comments section below. Next week, we'll have another theory on why Charizard is so popular, and why Blastoise should have taken his place all of those years ago. Until then though, take care, and as I always say, happy hunting baby rhinos.